conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast that's ready for its close-up, Mr. DeMille. I'm Dan O'Keefe, and joining me as always is Anna Otto. Anna, how are you doing? Worse, since I found out that that popular line is frequently misquoted. Yes, uh, every you? time. It, yep. it, it is. People never get it right. Because also, also, people don't get it me, right. Yeah, what are you drinking? I'm drinking an iced tea. It's a mint blueberry iced tea that I made. Is it good? Yeah, it's I feel like the delicious. I feel like adding the qualifier that I made is usually an excuse to be like, well, it's not as good as what I would get from Starbucks or something. But No, it's I'm telling you because it is so fucking delicious that I need everybody okay. to know how scrum diddly it is. My mom, okay, as Dan and I mentioned earlier, I'm not crash dieting, but I am trying to eat healthier. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, it's just a regular black tea that I didn't make, even though I could have. Um, Wait, you with, didn't make the easiest part of it? No. Um, with mint from my dad's garden and blueberry simple syrup. That So, okay, when I said I made, I meant I combined everything. It's mostly stuff my parents made, okay? And I stole okay. it from their house and put it all together in a cup, and now I'm drinking it. Is that good enough, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful description. I love, I love cuisine. Not cuisine, Dan. A cuisine is anything you put in your mouth. Don't quote me. Oh, don't, well, then I too don't enjoy take that cuisine. Out of context. <laughs> this is like how Gage and I started watching The Bear, and now we just keep, like, even more yelling than we did corner. Before. Oh, no, not corner. Just chef and hands. Okay, yeah. Good. Uh, also, The Bear is so good. It's Ew, so good. Why did Gage and Jester just both peered in comically i wish you could have been here for that anyway yeah it's really good i like it a lot um but going back to the misquoting point everybody misquotes it and also i misquoted it at the beginning um but the quote is so much worse because it's not a powerful the the name mr demille is the end of the quote doesn't work as well because I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille, make it sound like the important thing in the saying is Mr. DeMille. That's not. The close-up is the important thing. So, Mr. DeMille, mm -hmm. I'm ready for my close-up. That's a much more rising action to the peak of the sentence. It okay. works better linguistically. English teacher. <laughs> I don't Angrily even know. Angrily yelling about past participles. I'm currently reading a book that our, um, our friend Cassie loaned to me. And mm -hmm. you know Cassie. Anyway, <laughs> um, she, yes, I do. Cassie annotates and tabs every single book she reads, all of them. Uh, wrong. And I'm Shouldn't. like, I said to her, I was like, "Dang, are you an English teacher? Because this is that's what it feels like, girl." She was like, "I could be," and I was like, "Yeah, well, I'll be doing my best with this one for sure." But it's actually been kind of helpful because, well, I kind of see if you're listening, I'm sort of like, why didn't she test this fits into a category? <laughs> but mostly I look back, I'm like, what did Cassie think of this? <laughs> I didn't, uh, I was, whole, I got in trouble because I wouldn't right? annotate in high school. Because I was like, I don't have anything. My annotations, yeah. To do, I, don't, I don't want to. No, my annotations would always be like, I'm not going to look back mark. at these annotations. It's like, whoa. Anyway, the movie that we're talking about today is Sunset Boulevard. Ah. Or. Not the musical. Not the musical. No. No singing in this movie. Boo. Hiss. There is. Hey, there is a song and there is a dance number. Briefly. More more a comedy act than a dance number, but it's set to music. I was say, I don't know that I'd count that, but okay. Um. Released in 1950, directed by Billy Wilder, written by Charles Brackett, Billy Wilder, and D.M. Marshman Jr. What a name. What a name, honestly. Oh, yes. 
Uh, that is the only film credit that he has. You know, sometimes you, you succeed. There's just nothing you could do to ever top it. Starring William Holden, Gloria Swanson, Eric Von Stroheim, Nancy Olson, no relation to my grandparents, Fred Clark, Lloyd... Oh, I Dolph. thought... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And also starring Jack Webb. Um, Great name. Do you know who Jack Webb is? No. Oh, the creator of Dragnet. Oh, jeez. And Adam I, 12. I don't subscribe. I unsubscribed big time from what I just said. <laughs> uh, released on August 10th, 1950, with a budget of $1.75 million. That seems like a lot for the time. Yeah, it's all the numbers don't make sense prior to like the 70s. It says the box office was $5 million, but I, whatever. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 98% approval rating. Okay. 9.5 out of 10. Arguably the greatest movie about Hollywood, Billy Wilder's masterpiece Sunset Boulevard is a tremendously entertaining combination of noir, black comedy, and character study. I mean, I thought it was funny and sad, and I wanted to be in it. I wanted to play... What's her face? Norma? Yeah. Couldn't you see it? I could. Thank you. You're you're a you're a faded star. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I am. You're right. At the 23rd Academy Awards, Sunset Boulevard was nominated for 11 Oscars. Good for them, honestly. It was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor questionably best supporting actress best original screenplay best art direction best cinematography best film editing and best score of a dramatic or comedy picture that, that's just all pictures just best uh, score they had a separate well because of how prevalent musicals were they had a separate musical score category okay i guess i'll let it slide then but barely they're on thin ice uh it won three of those Mm. Best score of a dramatic or comedy picture, best art direction, and best screenplay. Interesting. It lost many other awards to the movie we will be talking about next week. Cannot wait. That sounds sarcastic. No, Dan, not at all. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing here? All I'm doing is keep gaslighting girl bossing just like I do every day. <laughs> I think I know the answer to this. Anna, when was the first time you saw Sunset Boulevard? Literally last week when I watched it. Yeah, that's what I figured. I mean, I knew about the musical because, so here's the tea. Gage had been asked to be in it. But he couldn't, I can't remember why, but Gage couldn't be in it. So I knew it existed, but I guess I just didn't realize that it was not just a musical. So, because if it's not a musical, <laughs> it doesn't exist to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. I was more aware of the musical than I was of the movie. Mm. Because I think my parents saw it at some point and then they bought the cd soundtrack okay, for it fair fair yeah uh, we all have our beginning and my dad music. would listen to it i wouldn't really listen to it but i would see the cd and i'd be like oh sunset boulevard that's a musical you know yeah the one where they i also i also got it confused with starlight express no not the rollerblade musical dan yeah and i was like yeah sunset boulevard the one where they meet rollerblade dan please Mr. DeMille, I'm ready to rollerblade up for my close-up. Yep, period. Honestly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Not the rollerblade for my close-up, please. So, I'm fighting for then a few years ago, I was it was like April 2020, and I was like, I want to watch a movie. So, I was like, I'll watch Sunset Boulevard. And I watched it, and before I say my opinion, Anna, what was your opinion? 
hot and cold, honestly. I liked it, but sometimes I was like, this is doing too much. Okay. Why am I here? Okay, fair. But sometimes I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I did have a lot of questions at the beginning with the whole bit with the monkey and everything, and it did annoy me sometimes, but, you know, we made it at the end. So. Sure. I get that. Uh, slightly stronger opinion than you. Hot, hot, hot. Mm-hmm. Hot all the it? time. Did I oh. like it? I loved it. Okay. I think it's fantastic. Okay, okay, Dan. Loved it. Got it. Mm-hmm. I think every bit of it is great. Almost every bit of That's it is great. That's such a bold statement to be making, but okay. Yeah. I'm bold. I'm brave. Yeah, brave new world over here. Um, like, what? What is? <laughs> what is there not to to love for me specifically? Oh, that's true for you. <laughs> I was gonna say for me, the parts where it's in black and white. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Black and Nothing, white. Nothing, I guess. Beautiful. It's it's just I just black and white's not for me. But that's just me. That's just Anna, you know. You could never be a dog. No, you're right. I couldn't. I'd be like, where's the color? Uh, Let me see some color. Boy, do I have some jokes that that would have been a part of that I'm not going to say. Please don't say them. (laughs) Please, Dan, I cannot afford to be sued right now. (laughs) By whom? The haters. (laughs) I didn't realize the haters were so litigious. I, I... I don't know what to tell you. Um, you want to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. So, we start off. There's a body floating in the pool. It's giving the Great Gatsby right off the bat. Uh, it has to be yeah, I, uh, inspired yeah, by it that. It was immediately giving the Great Gatsby. So, uh, the The body's name is Joe mm. Gillis. He is... Played by William Mm -hmm. Holden. Uh, You know the song Tom's Diner? I can't say I do. It's the one that Fall Out Boy sampled in Centuries. The do 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 Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I do do know that song. I just didn't know that it was called that. So, spoiler alert for the life of William Holden. uh, In Tom's (laughs) Diner... In one of the verses, she's talking about there's a story of an actor who had died while he was drinking. It was no one I had heard of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was likely William Holden, who oh. who died by falling out of his window. That's kind of a dig, though. Like, I'd never heard of him. Whoa. Ah, dang. Yeah. So I don't even know. I'm too stunned to speak right now. Anyway, back to the movie. Um, <laughs> the movie is then narrated from beyond the grave by Joe. Um, just like... Wait, no, never mind. That's a lie. I just lied into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just like the great Gatsby, but that's not true at all. <laughs> no. Oh, Lord. No. no. <laughs> He's oh, very Lord. much alive in the great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. It's not narrated by Tom. I tested you and you passed. Six months earlier, Joe, a down-on-his-luck screenwriter trying to get interest from Paramount Pictures. It's fun to see yourself represented on screen. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, he's down on his luck. He needs money. He submits a story. Uh, a script reader reads it and says, basically, this is a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> Right with him Me in the I room. when I took script writing class. <laughs> have you considered never writing again? You yes, probably should. Oh, great. Thank you so much. I will definitely um, do that. So the, the script reader, Betty, critiques it with him in the room. And then she realizes he's in the room and says, I would like to crawl into a hole and pull the hole with me. Um, I mean, been there, girly. Been there. Uh, um. So then, later on, Joe is fleeing from Repo Men trying to get his car in a car chase. 
The 50s were wild, man. They were wild. I was like, what is going That's on? That's what you did. You were just on the run from people trying to repossess your car at all times. I'm still on the run, but nobody's trying to repossess my car or anything. I just am running away. What's it called when a ghost leaves your body and then comes back? Repossession. <laughs> Correct. Good job, everyone. We did it. Uh, so, on the run, he pulls into the driveway of a deserted mansion. Iconic mood. I love That's when you can just do that. That's obviously where I would go, right? He's like, Definitely. ah, yes, a garage. I'll be safe in here. <sighs> Fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> this is the start of a horror movie. This um, is literally the scariest. If I Has he never, like, read a book? No, he's a Were writer. No they scary... don't read. We don't read. You're right. You're right. We just Sorry, write. Dan. Never experienced uh, a spooky moment in his life. Few have. Not me. I've never been scared. <laughs> The blessed few. Um, mm-hmm. it, instead, it, the mansion is inhabited by former silent film star Norma Desmond and her butler, Max von Meyerling. Um, and she thinks that he is a monkey undertaker. I, that part, I was literally watching the screen going, what is happening in this moment right now? What is going on? I am so lost. <laughs> uh, so he is like, no, I'm not. But then she finds out he's a screenwriter. And she's like, ooh, I have a script that I wrote about Salome. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to play her. And I want uh, you to review the script. I don't even know what to say. I, Dan, you know, sometimes art imitates life, and I could see myself going crazy in the future. And, like, I wrote it for myself. Put me in it. I'm ready. <laughs> my monkey has died, and I need something else to do. Please Literally read my mood. script. <laughs> um, the script is a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Joe thinks it's a piece of shit. But he lies and flatters her and gets hired as a script doctor and also sugar baby oh man he's got it good though low-key like yeah sugar baby he doesn't even have to do anything he doesn't even have to fool around with her he just has to let her buy him stuff and give her a kiss sometimes like right it's basically like a no touching thing ideal i'd be her sugar baby if that's what it took you know if i just had to spend her money and tell her she was haunted cash the check you know what i'm saying then Joe, who is basically being evicted from his apartment as well, well uh, moves into Norma's mansion. His sugar mama. And her doors don't have locks because her doctor was afraid that she would lock herself in a room and kill herself. I didn't like that. That was a jump scare. Norma refuses to admit that she is over the hill. She is no longer a star. Um, what is she, like 40? She is 50. Oh, God, don't even get me freaking started. I'm going to... Lead, read you a list of actresses who are currently 50. I know some of them are like hot, hot, hot. Give them to me. Kate Beckinsdale. Rose McGowan. Kristen Wiig. <gasps> I love Kristen Wiig. Katherine Hahn. Okay. Love Catherine. In a few months, James Marsden. Uh, so... Over the hill is what I'm saying. All of them. James Marsden is so handsome, though. Yeah. Like, I refuse to accept it. Thank you so much. I will not be having it. Uh, Joe also learns that Norma thinks that she is getting a bunch of fan mail, but it's all being written by her butler. That part made me sad. <laughs> Again. That part, I was like, oh, it's so well written. Just the line that explains it. <sighs> I wouldn't look too closely at the postmark. Ugh. Mm. That mm. was a good line, but like... Great line. <laughs> okay. Um, Norma has a New Year's Eve party and she realizes she's fallen in love with Joe. And Joe, hearing this, is like, uh, I like you as a friend. Step <laughs> one of sugar babying. Don't let the person fall in love with you unless they're <laughs> on their literal deathbed. Uh, so then Norma slaps him, goes into her room, and then they're like, oh, God, she's going to kill herself. No, no, no. She has no locks. 
This is kind of stressing me out. Like, it's kind of giving she needed a grippy sock vacation. Like, uh, they, Do you know what a grippy sock vacation was in the 1950s? Uh, The thing where they scramble your brains. A lobotomy uh, and a, lobotomy. a popsicle. Yep, I forgot what it was called for a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they take an egg beater into your nose and just go... For like two seconds. Joe leaves the party and, and goes to visit his friend Artie and his now fiance Betty... Um, the script writer who was like, this is a piece of shit. And Artie turns and goes, just the facts, ma'am. And then I laugh and laugh and laugh if that actually happened. That was uh, Jack Webb's uh, thing on Dragnet. Why, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my parents say that a lot. Your parents have good taste. The just the facts, ma'am, or whatever. I just... <laughs> I'm not, I, I didn't say anything about your taste. Uh, they have okay taste, Dan. Don't, don't lie. <laughs> um, you and my parents would get along so swimmingly. Uh, at the party, basically, the scripter is like, I think one of your scenes has potential. Uh, and then they start macking out, right? As immediately after being like oh we're getting married mm, let's make out is that not how you celebrate i mean that's what i did a moment after ann and i got engaged no, where's my kids? yeah exactly where's... i'm evolving with the one two i'm evolving the from a two. where's my hug guy to a where's my kiss guy ew absolutely disgusting <laughs> disgusting um then they hear that norma cut her wrists with his razor so then Joe goes that, home and their relationship much. becomes a little bit more, a little more lovey, a little bit more dovey. It becomes Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> it, it becomes a, where's my lick? Ew, not a lick. I didn't say where. Be a face not, where's lick. my butt touch? Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to become that kind of guy now. Please don't. Where I want other people to touch my butt. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so Norma has Max Dan, give Dan, her Dan. script. What am I going to do with you? <laughs> give her script to Cecil B. DeMille playing himself. So Max delivers the, the script to Cecil B. DeMille and then Norma starts getting calls from a Paramount executive, but she refuses to talk to anyone else except for DeMille. Uh, and then they have a big thing where she goes on to the lot, drives to Paramount. Um, and they get let in by an old security guard who knows who she is. Uh, and she she built this lot. They wouldn't have a lot without her. Um, Did this part give you secondhand anxiety or was that just me who was experiencing it? Uh, not me. I was just more sad than anything. I mean, I also was sad because this movie made me fucking sad. <laughs> Um, so she meets with DeMille and he treats her with great respect that she thinks that she deserves, but won't answer any questions about the script. Uh, but they actually just want to rent her car. They just want to use her car in a movie. That's all they want. Uh, I don't even know. This part was very cringe for me and hard to watch. It was a big <laughs> oof, if you will. But Norma thinks, oh, I'm going to have a comeback now. So she starts undergoing rigorous beauty treatments. Hair, face, body, everything. Okay, that was kind of iconic, and honestly, I was jealous. Uh, but then Joe was working nights with Betty's with Betty in her office, writing an original screenplay. Wink. Touching butts. Hey, want to write an original screenplay with me? If by original screenplay you mean touch butts, and by <laughs> write you mean T touch in your office. <laughs> So the translation of that sentence that you just created was, do you want to, in your office, mm -hmm. and touch butts with me? Yeah. Sounds I love hot, English. right? Wow. I love the English language. I don't know what to tell you. I'm turned on. Uh, but then Max finds out that he's doing this. He's moonlighting. He's having a, an emotional affair, some might Moon. say. Um, oh, that, ooh. I had chills down my spine. And Max, oh, he's not just her assistant, her servant. Uh, he was a respected film director. He discovered mm -hmm. Norma. He made her a star. He was her first husband. 
the way my pearls were clutched at that reveal. And he feels like he's the reason she is this way. And that's why he abandoned his career to become her servant. I mean... I don't know what to say. We love a man. <laughs> a man that grows. Is willing. Yeah, we love growth. Um, Norma finds the manuscript with both Joe and Betty's names on it. Calls Betty and says, Joe's not the man that he says he is. He's a piece of shit. Gasp. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Joe I mean, overhears and then invites Betty like, come on, I'll show you. And he does. He, he has the all the confidence of a man that's about to die. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, he's just like, ah, this is going great. Nothing bad can happen to me. I'm satisfied being a Dear kept Lord. man here. I love being here with Norma. I'll just tear away both of my oh. connections here. Um, so Betty runs out brokenhearted. Uh, and then he's like, okay, time to go back to Ohio. A sentence I'll never utter. A fate worse than death. Truly. <laughs> uh and then he tells Norma there's not going to be a comeback for her. All the fan mail comes from Max. Nobody remembers her. She's forgotten. She's a ghost. Very She's sad. 50. <gasps> when I turn 50, I think I'm going to have a, a <laughs> Sunset Boulevard theme party. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Aniston is 54. She's not old. Like she's Jennifer very Garner young. is 51. Yeah, these people, like... Ben they Affleck don't strike is 50. Me as old. Well, he's elderly, so. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez is 53. Gorgina Queen. I saw a picture of her today and I was like, wow, she looks amazing. Yes. It was uh, a swimsuit but... picture. I was jealous that I wasn't at a pool. Oh, it's because it's National Bikini Day, according oh, to yeah. Twitter. Well, I wear a one piece because I hate how I look, so. <laughs> and I wear a bikini because I don't like my nipples. Amazing. Thank you, Dan, for doing that service for all of us. Okay, I, that doesn't mean that you don't get to like... Everybody else should like my nipples. It should no. be a personal thing. It's too late, Dan. I hate them. I hate oh. all nipples. <laughs> I was once told that I was homophobic for hating nipples. What? I don't know. It was during college, and someone was just desperately trying to be right about something. So they, were, so they veered as wrong as they could go. They really forgot what the word homophobic means. Yes. Nipplephobic, yes. You're homophobic for thinking feet are gross. I'm homophobic for thinking feet are gross. <laughs> I think everyone is. I the gays that. also probably homophobic for thinking <laughs> feet are gross. <laughs> um, Norma threatens to kill herself. Um, again. W- Sorry, again. that was so rude of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem oh, is- you're doing it again? <laughs> Fine. Like, T- fucking do she's... it this time, Norma. <gasps> no, Dan, too far, too far. <laughs> Um, so Joe goes to leave, uh, and Norma treats him like Paul lying about knowing Jesus, shooting three times. Dang. You're right. It's a little, little Does, Easter. I mean, like. Easter reference for you. They don't have. Is it Peter? Was it he Paul? denies him. It's Peter, and he denies him three times. He doesn't shoot anyone. <laughs> Thrice before the cock crows, you know? Oh, my freak. I wasn't even touching my phone that time, Dan. Why do you keep hanging up on me? I didn't even touch my phone that time. Is there, are your neighbors coming downstairs and hanging up? <laughs> Probably the ghosts. <laughs> Anywho. Um, he gets shot. He's murdered. He's dead now. It's giving Easter. It's giving... Wait, not Easter. Gatsby. <laughs> Uh, then it's the present again, and the house is filled. Policemen, reporters, gossip columnist Hedda Hopper playing herself. Perez Hilton. Uh, she, Norma's totally out of reality. She thinks the newsreel cameras are there to film her movie. Uh, and then Max and the police get her to play along. And then the cameras roll. She descends down her grand staircase. Mm-hmm. She talks about how happy she is to be making a film again. And then she says, Mr. Demille, I'm ready for my close-up. This and whole... zoom on in, and that's the end. This whole movie could have been solved if she took a little grippy sock vacation, but in the year 2023, where she would have had medication and therapy and not 
an egg scrambler to the brain. A lobotomy and a popsicle. Yeah, no, she needs to have a real therapist. <laughs> um, it that is Sunset Boulevard. Not nearly enough music. What a picture. It's very classic Hollywood, though. Like, it's it's classic. It's both classic and also a send-up of classic Hollywood. Well, yeah, in, how so? In, well, in the way that Singing in the Rain is. I love Singing in the Rain. They are both celebrations of and uh, tearing downs of the oh. industry that they are within. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, they are really saying, like, 50 is old in this movie but also saying 50 shouldn't be old in this movie it's only old for women though because how old was mr demille well cecil b demille was playing himself and how old he was the head of the studio so i don't think that really counts geriatric he was was 69 geriatric it counts uh and william well, well william holden was actually only 32 so elderly yes one foot in the grave (laughs) um yeah i just i i think that the way that this uh, is a commentary on how hollywood treats aging stars a commentary on the acceptance of aging and knowing your time uh and knowing your place in the industry um how the industry chews you up and spits you out and it gets you on the highest highs and then pulls the rug out from under you i think this movie does that better than any other movie i would agree with you i think it's definitely um a stepping stone for a lot of other like it's it i definitely feel like i've seen movies that have parodied this movie before a hundred percent absolutely yeah i'm sure there's also like an animaniacs episode i'm sure there is (laughs) (laughs) triggered uh and, and also the it's so well written. I'm like every Billy Wilder movie is really well written. Mm-hmm. So that's not a surprise at all. But no, it's I just actually, so well written. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. Like it, it did take me for a few, you know, crazy spins, but I did enjoy mm-hmm. it. And it's well shot. Mm-hmm. I want to go in that now demolished mansion. What I want to pet monkey. Well, you want a dead pet monkey. No, no. I want to, like, you know, have the fun with the monkey before he dies. Like, I don't want him to just be dead when he gets here. I mean, the the symbolism of the monkey is that Norma just wants somebody to uh, dance with. and clap for her. Oh, I just I just like animals. And play with. yeah. I met someone who had a, a pet monkey once. It was kind of a weird experience. <laughs> I don't trust them. Uh, well, they were selling art, so like, let's circle back okay, to what hold this up. movie was. <laughs> You're, is that supposed to be a positive? It was. I was saying it was an eccentric experience all around. Actually, Dan, it was the day that we were supposed to record the first episode of our podcast. I was texting you while it was happening. I'm 99 percent sure I sent you a picture of me <laughs> with the monkey. Oh my gosh! Yeah, core memory, huh? You were essentially there. It was during well, Basically. not during COVID, but like. That was at the height. Know. That was right at the beginning of COVID. Oops. Well, I went to an art show. Sorry I didn't flatten the curve, everyone. Jesus Christ. Don't worry. I'm vaccinated. I'm not that crazy. I was scared. I used to Clorox my, like, if I bought bags of chips, Cloroxed. I didn't do that. I would just Clorox my mouth in between each bite. Oh, perfect. As you should. Yeah. Spray some Lysol in there. <laughs> my favorite's the lemon. Uh, I prefer the fresh mist. Mm. I actually have early morning breeze scented Lysol in this very room that I'm sitting in because when I had COVID back in October, this was the staging area where Gage brought all of my stuff to be Lysoled after I was done being (laughs) sick. (laughs) Because I had a few things that couldn't be washed. Like I had a giant pillow. I had my weighted blanket. Like those have to be dry cleaned. So it's like, let's just Lysol those first. And I was like, okay. Um, I have some trivia about the movie. So, the some Hollywood stars played themselves or former stars. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Cecil B. DeMille played Cecil B. DeMille. He was mm-hmm. the head of Paramount for yes. forty years. Um, 
or not the head of Paramount, but one of the top people at Paramount. Yes, yes. No, sorry. Wait, no. He founded Paramount. Never mind. God, um, Dan, what is the truth? <laughs> Hedda Hopper, gossip columnist, played herself. Mm-hmm. Um, Sidney Sklosky was also mm-hmm. a gossip columnist. He played himself. Mm-hmm. Buster Keaton was one of her bridge player friends. I know that name. You, He was the one with the very sad eyes. You would recognize wow. him if you saw a picture of him. Okay. Good to know. Uh, and then also Anna Q. Nielsen, who was a silent movie actress, and H.B. Warner, who was a silent movie actor, um, were also her bridge friends. Mm. And playing themselves. He was also in It's a Wonderful Life. Boo. Hiss. Hey. It's a great movie. Hiss. Boo. Great movie. I'll fight you. Um I'm fighting you over the spirit of Christmas. I was say, you're fighting me over some pretty crazy stuff, Dan. Because that movie <laughs> is trash. Uh, the original cut of the movie had the narration coming from Joe's corpse talking to other corpses in the morgue. Um, <clears throat> I mean this respectfully, as respectfully as possible. What the fuck? Yeah, it made the test audiences laugh really hard. So they cut it out and replace it with just him narrating. Yeah, that's... I hate that so much. I don't think it's possible for me to hate it any more than I, than I do. <laughs> uh, Cecil B. DeMille agreed to do his cameo for a $10,000 fee and a brand new Cadillac. Ooh, okay, get it. Damn. Then Billy Wilder had to go back to do some reshoots, and Cecil B. DeMille charged him another $10,000. I mean, get that bread, Cecil right mm-hmm. um so gloria swanson had a somewhat similar career to norma desmond um where she was a silent film star and then she didn't really make the transition into talking movies uh very well That's so sad so her success had waned in the 30s so she but there it changed her her path was different than normal because she transitioned into radio and became a radio host and a touring stage actor um and then she was cast in sunset boulevard and nominated for an oscar um wide acclaim she only did two other movies or a few other movies after sunset boulevard though because all the roles that she was getting offered were just basically norma desmond again that sucks honestly that's mm, that really sucks but she was still working because she started doing a lot of television good for her just like guest spots on television shows and like hosting a talk show it was good for her she had a very just a very consistent career well then no complaints yeah uh, she was also married six times. Jesus Christ. How? To a bunch of guys that have very old Hollywood names. Mm. Like what? Name one. Wallace Beery. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Herbert K. Somborn. Yeah, Herbert Somborn. Who was the founder of the Brown Derby restaurant. Oh. I've been to the one at Disney World. Uh, also, Henry de la Falay, Marquis de la Cordre, a French nobleman. Some of these kind of sound like like drinks or meals. Uh, and then Michael Farmer, William Davy, and William Duffy. Mm, two Williams back to back. Right. But she married William Duffy in 1976. How old was she? She was 77. Good for her. Honestly, get it, girl. He? Okay, that was close enough. He was 63. Oh, that's not so bad. That's not... At that point, that's not really giving cradle robber, you know? If he was, like, 30? Mm. I would have been nervous. Um, When Norma and Joe are watching the movie, her silent movie... It is footage from the movie Queen Kelly, uh, which was unreleased in the U.S. at that time, starring Gloria Swanson and directed by Eric Von Stroheim, who played Max. Mm. 
I love Eric that. von Stroheim was much more well known as a director than he was as an actor. Um, he directed the 1924 film Greed. Why have I heard of which that? Which was considered one of the greatest movies ever made. Mm, that's probably why. Um, and it, the first cut was originally nine hours long. Absolutely not. And then the studio cut a ton of footage and didn't save it. So the theatrical release was 140 minutes long. And then through reconstruction and stills, they have reconstructed it to 240 minutes. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, thank you. Um, so the fact that he is playing a former director turned assistant kind of a casting gag i love that um there were supposed william holden and nancy olsen were supposed to be the next hollywood couple group bait like two actors that keep getting cast oh uh, yes like tom hanks um, and meg ryan yeah they had three more movies together but none of them were successful well, we can't all be tom hanks and meg ryan that's true I wish Me I was. Too. Both. I'd be rich. Um, other actresses considered for Norma uh, were Greta Garbo, Pola Negri, Mary Pickford, and Mae West. I don't know any of those people. I'm sorry. All of whom were silent film stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Montgomery Clift was originally cast as Joe. Do you know who that is? No. He was in a bunch of... He, he was... Uh, in a bunch of westerns, um, so my parents. He was also know him. very close friends with Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, I know her. Yeah, um, he was in the theatrical original theatrical performance of *The Skin of Our Teeth*. <laughs> I just had an allergic reaction. <laughs> I just had an allergic reaction. Um, I'll never forget. Side story for everyone. We were at ACTF, and I filled in as the dinosaur. And our friend Aileen was looking for me, and the dinosaur costume was on the cross. She goes, where's Anna? Where's Anna? Where's Anna? And I limply lifted one of the dinosaur legs, and then she goes, oh, and lays down on the ground and talks to me through the face. Because <laughs> I was waiting for somebody <laughs> else to get their costume taken off. Iconic. Anyway. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, Marlon Brando was also considered, but he was considered too much of an unknown at the time. A streetcar named Desire had not come out. I was going to say, really, an unknown. And yeah, and MGM refused to loan out Gene Kelly, who they also wanted. Oh, Gene Kelly, wasn't he kind of? Who was it? Yeah, he was the one that was kind of a pee pee poo poo head during Singing in the Rain, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then for the musical. Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote it, but Stephen Sondheim was originally working on a musical version. Mm, Two Kings. Anna, I have a question for you. I think I know the answer. Would this movie be better or worse or the same with Jonathan Taylor Thomas as the main character? I don't think there's any room for him in this show. It's just too (laughs) old-fashioned. I don't think he would fit. Like, the acting style, and I can't see him, like, playing that kind of a character how about you i want him to be uh same character he could yeah he, i mean he could be joe jack webb he could be Artie. okay I the can friend see that. who gets cucked mm-hmm. um i don't think jimmy stewart would work as max as the butler no i think he would work really well as Artie, though i think you're right jimmy stewart Let's see. This came out in 1950. How old was Jimmy Stewart in 1950? He might have also been 50. Uh, He was 42. He was too close in age to Norma to play her young lover. Old. Um, Old. Did I lose him? That's it. No. No, I'm still here. I, I am found. Um... But, yeah, I don't think there's room. It'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. You might want to check those postmarks. Don't look too closely. Wink. 
of the postmarks. You might want to check her postmarks. Ew, okay, too far. That's what we call nipples Ew, here in the I'm 40s. Ew, I'm Ah. On a scale of one to five nipples, what do you give it? I give it four nipples. I didn't hate it. It was actually pretty enjoyable for an old movie for me. It's no bells of If it was in color... If it was in color, would it be higher? No, I think it'd still be a four. Nothing else different. No. Okay. It's okay. just not. It's no bells of St. Mary's, okay? Okay, fair. You might be the only one to say I that. Love fair. bells of St. Mary's. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Wait, you don't like that movie? No, it's fine. We'll watch it at Christmas and revisit this conversation. Okay. Uh, I give it a five out of five. <gasps> a perfect score. Great. A perfect I'm score, shook, a perfect ten. Literally shook to my core. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's just wonderful. It's everything that I want. Okay, all right. It Dan. has everything. Dead monkeys, cucking. D- Dan. Hollywood history. What else could you want? A pool. A monkey. Oh, sorry. You want a live monkey? I didn't realize yeah. that we were wealthy. I want the monkey alive. Um, do you have anything else to add about Sunset Boulevard? Now I just gotta see the musical, I guess. Just listen to the soundtrack. I'm sure it'll be the same. That's true. Maybe I could find a good audition piece from it. We'll report back. My monkey's dead. I can't wait to add that to the roster. (laughs) Um, That's it for this week's episode of In Conclusion. Thank you all for listening. If you want to find us, we're on social media on Facebook and Twitter at and in conclusion on Instagram at in conclusion podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash in conclusion. I'm on Twitter at Dan O'Keefe 86 and on TikTok at not Dan O'Keefe. Anna, where can they find you? I'm on Instagram at Adam's Prime 818 or on Twitter at Autobots Roll Out, capital O for auto, capital B for bots, capital R for roll in the O and roll in the O and out are zeros. Also, please follow my dog on Instagram, Jester the Pup 1017, like a court jester, because multiple people have thought her name was Jasper and multiple people have thought her name was Chester. So I thought I'd clear the air. Hmm, multiple people have been wrong. I know, I'm always like, wait, please. <laughs> uh, it's Jester. We will be back next week talking about all about eve this movie's spiritual sibling so in the meantime wait. everybody stay safe and have fun bye 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 it's okay i just you know back to the drawing board